It's kind of like the Ruth story. The princess who brought peace. Please save my people because I want to save yours too. And allowed a nation to thrive. The United States has been blessed because of that covenant. Our series on Pocahontas concludes. She is coming from two different worlds. And she joins those two worlds together. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Good morning and welcome to the show. Thanksgiving is only a day away, so you still have a little time to get ready for that big Thanksgiving dinner. And as you're rushing off to the store for any last minute items, be careful not to break any of the traffic laws. That's right. Sirens, lights, and worried faces. That's what some people in Fort Worth, Texas recently encountered as they were pulled over for small traffic violations. But these people aren't getting tickets, they're getting turkeys. The Fort Worth Police Department was handing out turkeys instead of tickets. I love that idea as a way to spread some holiday happiness. <laughs> Even though we do enforce traffic law and we do have some unpleasant decisions to make, we still are about the people. That is considered driving on the wrong side of the roadway. We're going to overlook that. Okay. So instead of giving out citations, we're going to give you a Thanksgiving turkey. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. You see, brotherly love, it's very, very inspiring. That's wow. a different kind of ticket. I like that. <laughs> I <laughs> here, love that here, too. have a turkey day. That's a wonderful well, you thing. You know that dread you feel when you look in the rear view mirror and you realize oh, no. they're not going to pass you? <laughs> As those lights are coming up, they're yeah, pulling time, you over. Time to bit pull over. But to walk away with a, a gift instead and just somebody giving you grace instead of a ticket is pretty special. I like that. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Well, a heartwarming video of a South Carolina student who bought his classmate a pair of Air Jordans after he saw him being bullied. Well, that thing has gone viral, and here's a quick look. I, I heard the boy be bullying you and stuff and peeking on you still, bro. I bought some uh, jade, bro. Are you real for that? For real? Yeah, yeah. bro, I swear, bro. I bought some jade, bro. No, bro. I bought it for you, bro. For, for real? Bro, put them on, bro. Put them on. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I can't believe it, bro. Yeah, I can't Oh, you got the day on one time for you? Well, Tay Moore, a high school wow. student, published the video on his Facebook saying, this kid goes to our school named Easy e He likes to rap. And he said he wants to be a rapper, just trying to chase his dream. But kids at school like to bully him and pick on him and talk about the way he dresses and looks. So I went and bought him some Jordans. And he was shocked. And that video oh, wow. has had three million views. Tay, we need to clone you <laughs> <laughs> by the millions. I loved how wow. he responded, for real? Yeah. <laughs> for real? Put them on, bro. <laughs> These are yours. Isn't that amazing? What a kind, thoughtful, just generous thing to do. That's wonderful because I'm definitely thinking of others. How can I encourage yeah. you today? You're being bullied. You're being critiqued yeah. here. Let's and going against the go tide because a lot of times, you know, you can see someone being bullied and you can feel badly about what's happening to them. But but kids are afraid to step in. Yeah, and, the herd mentality yeah. that mm -hmm. I'll be next. I'll be the next target if I'm if I stand up. Yeah, Taymor, yeah. you are awesome. Well, grandmothers are incredible, too. I know because I am one. She <laughs> yes, said humbly. Are. And you are incredible. <laughs> I'll you, say Gordon. it for you. Your check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, grandmas are loving, and usually their food is amazing. So when grandma asks you over for Thanksgiving dinner, you say yes. But what if sweet grandma sends the message to the wrong person? Well, that's exactly what happened to 17-year-old Jamal Hinton. Jamal was sitting in class when he received a text message inviting him for Thanksgiving dinner. So he texted the woman back asking who it was. And the woman responded, it's your grandma. Well, Jamal figured his grandmother had gotten a new number, so he asked for a picture just to double check. And the woman responded with a picture of herself. <laughs> this picture came in of this woman with blonde hair and glasses, not Jamal's grandma. So Jamal sent back a selfie to let her know he was not her grandson. 
He then asked if the offer for Thanksgiving dinner still stood. I love this. The woman responded, of course, that's what grandmas do. Feed everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal says he hopes this inspires others this holiday season. We weren't related, but I said, hey, why not ask for a plate? People can actually connect and be so nice to each other, even with people they don't even know. Maybe especially with people they don't know. <laughs> Jamal says he's definitely going over on Thanksgiving and he's not coming empty handed. He'll probably bring a pumpkin pie. Is this an argument for random texts? No, it's an argument for <laughs> open seating at your Thanksgiving table this year. Yeah, I mean, I think this is so awesome. You go, Jamal, go over there and have that, that dinner with and have them. some fun and yes. do, yeah, bring a pie and yeah. uh, have, have a lot of fun. And Grandma, kudos to you for opening the door and welcoming yeah. a new friend. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what grandmas do. <laughs> well, re recently, millions of people have also been inspired by a Facebook post about a tablecloth. In 2000, Deb Mills came up with this unique way to cherish her family's Thanksgiving memories. The holiday tradition consists of each person who joins her family's Thanksgiving dinner while they get to sign the white tablecloth. Each year is done on a different color, and along the edge of the tablecloth, Deb has a color code. She then hand embroiders the signatures through the winter months to make it more durable. And then footprints of newborn babies and a drawing of a graduation cap are also on the tablecloth to march, mark each generation's celebrations. Deb says there's one memory that's the most sacred and special. It's the signature of her daughter, Mary, who died suddenly of a ruptured aneurysm three years ago at the age of 44. And what a wonderful wow. memento. That is a labor of love That's to go in and hand and border each yeah. signature. I love That's that great. idea. Yeah. I love that idea. I wonder who gets that. <laughs> <In the lo> <laughs> that could be creating a family issue, oh, Mary. My. Just oh, yeah. But what a treasure. I mean, what a memory. Yeah, that is a great idea. Yeah, it's something that you kind of wonder, will somebody frame it and, yes. and put it on a wall? Ought to. Yeah. They ought to, yeah. And then argue about who gets the frame yeah, gets tablecloth. <laughs> See, you, you thought that was a solution. What's up with that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, she only lived 21 years, but her legacy has been remembered through the ages. She really laid the foundation for that colony to survive. The life and death of the American legend Pocahontas continues right after this. Well, if you look at our nation's history, without Jamestown, there would be no America. And without Pocahontas, there would be no Jamestown. In the early years of the 17th century, the young Native American girl was used as a bargaining chip between two empires. And somehow, through the ensuing years, she would bring them both together. This is her story in the final part of our series, Pocahontas. In March of 1614, before Ralph's letter was delivered, Dale sailed up the Virginia coast to try again to exchange Pocahontas for the pillage guns. When Dale's group arrived, they were met by two of Pocahontas' half-brothers. Although they were happy to see their sister unharmed, they refused to return the guns. Pocahontas responded with news of her own. If my father loved me, he would value me more than old swords, guns, and axes. So I will stay with the English, who have always loved me. It's kind of like the Ruth story. I want to be with you. I'm, I'm, your people are my people, and your God is my God. And that's basically what she did. Pocahontas returned to Henricus, and Reverend Whitaker baptized her with a new name from the Bible. Rebecca, the mother of two nations in Genesis. It wouldn't be a name that would be given without thought, uh, without Christian thought. So there's a sense in which she is possibly being the person who will join the nations, the Indian nation, the Powhatan nation, and the English nation. In the Powhatan culture, you would have a name and then you would be given other names according to different things that you had done in your life. Warriors, for example, would be given additional names based on their exploits in, in, in war. 
Naming her Rebecca was taking on a Christian identity. This young lady is sharp. She knows her place in the world in a lot more ways than we would normally think of. She is coming from two different worlds. And she joins those two worlds together. I think her relationship with God was a very profound relationship, a very intimate relationship, and that she received instruction from him and she knew exactly who she was working for. The name Rebecca also echoed the meaning of her given name, Matoaka, or bright stream between the hills. She ended up being an emissary between two nations and being a part of the birthing of this nation because she really laid the foundation for that relationship and for that colony to survive. Just a few days after her baptism, Pocahontas and John Rolfe were married. It was the second marriage for both. She had already been married. This is never said, but it seems to be one of the few facts that there are, and that's in William Strachey, that she was married to a man called Kukum, about whom we know zero. So, in a sense, uh, she was Rolf's second wife, and he was her second husband. John Rolf had been one of the colonists who had been shipwrecked in the Bermudas, and he had a child there, a daughter, called Bermuda, who died in Bermuda, sadly, and his wife also died, his English wife, that came with him. Chief Poughton, in a sense, blessed the marriage. He didn't go personally, because he had pledged he would never return to the colony. But he did send representatives who were there when she was married. So, from the Poughton standpoint, this was a pledge of peace between the two. The Governor Dale talks about her in a similar way. He talks about her as a knot to bind the peace. America's first interracial marriage brought the longest truce the colony had ever known. The so-called Peace of Pocahontas lasted eight years. I think everybody saw this as the perfect symbol of the coming together of these two people, this way that there might be some kind of accommodation between the Indian and the English worlds. Chief Poughton had developed his federation largely through marriage relationships. You know, he would take as a wife the daughter of a chief of one of the, or of one of the other smaller tribes. And so there is a whole cultural dimension going on here. I think it was very important that she combined her culture with his culture and showed that it could be successful. As Rolf's tobacco enterprise grew, so did his family. Pocahontas had a son named Thomas. The Virginia Company asked them to visit England in order to cultivate new investors for the Virginia settlement. So in the spring of 1616, the Rolfs said goodbye to Reverend Whitaker and set sail for England, where Pocahontas was presented to London society. We know she was entertained by the Bishop of London and she attended a mask by Ben Johnson she was well placed at the mask, which again suggests a degree of status being accorded to her. While in England, the only known portrait of her was completed, an engraving done by Simon van der Pas. She is a Powhatan Indian who is in a sense dressed as an English woman of quite high status, and she has in her hand for some reason an ostrich feather, which some people have interpreted as a sign of royalty. The portrait has evolved much the same way the story of Pocahontas has. There's a version in which her features have been Europeanized, which is in quite a lot of books. Uh, and again, it's interesting the way that even this picture, which is a piece of contemporary evidence of a kind, has been, in a sense, uh, changed or altered in order to make her a more European person. The visit to England was a resounding success but Pocahontas would never see her home again. Someone who'd never left Virginia before, 
she is suddenly in this huge city in London, exposed to who knows what kind of virus or something that her body had no natural defense for. <laughs> Soon as they're ready to leave and they're back on the ship and they begin sailing down the Thames, she is so sick that they can't continue the trip. It is thought that Pocahontas was just 21 years old when she died and was buried in Gravesend, England. It states in the burial register that she was buried in the chancel of the parish church of here, a Virginian lady born, Mrs. Rebecca Rolfe, so that's lovely. We were blown away as tribal people when we went there and saw Gravesend Church and all of the history that they had on her and how she's still revered in England for saving the colony. And we didn't really understand until we got there how she actually saved us as Powhatan people. We were taught that she betrayed her people. So that was what we believed uh, our whole life. First of all, we believed the lie that John Smith was going to die and that she had saved his life. And then we also believed that she had snuck food into the colony to keep the colonists alive. And we considered them to be our enemy. I see her now as like an Esther, how she went before the king and said, you know, if I die, I die, but please save my people because I want to save yours too. Later that spring, her teacher, Alexander Whitaker, also died under tragic circumstances. He drowned in the James River, just a few miles from his home. Although he only lived for 32 years, today he is known as the Apostle of Virginia. He was in Virginia for only about six years. I mean, from the time he arrived to the time that he was drowned, but a very critical six years. He is definitely an unsung hero of Virginia. Without Whitaker, you probably would not have had the Rolfe marriage. Without the Rolfe marriage, you wouldn't necessarily have had that eight-year window to establish the colony. The history books have forgotten this man. Without him, would we have had the same relationship that we did with people like Pocahontas? She was obviously very interested in the English, very uh, willing to deal with them. The fact that she wanted to stay in their society after she was baptized and after she was given her name and after she was married to John Rolfe, it was indicative of the new person she had become through this minister, Whitaker. And so I think that he was a very important part of who she became. Our Lord's majesty is boundless. Anything is possible for him. The legacy of Alexander Whitaker and Pocahontas is still alive today. I see her legacy to us as being who she was, an instrument of reconciliation, an instrument of honor, and an instrument of generosity. She never had hatred in her heart. We're still intrigued. It's such an extraordinary person to have been and such an extraordinary life to have led. At the end of the day, I think we can see clearly that God was working in Pocahontas' life, in Alexander Whitaker's life, and John Rolfe's life. Some believe that there was a greater purpose involved. The covenant that was made for the land, it was made by an Anglican priest, Reverend Robert Hunt. He planted seeds here for Christianity. He made a covenant for this land. He said that this land would be dedicated to God, that it would be used for His glory, and that the gospel would go from here to every nation of the earth. God is all about covenant, and He's a covenant keeper. And because she was an instrument in His hand to create a covenant, a blood covenant, between these two nations, was really powerful. It was consummated in their marriage. 
because that was the consummation of the blood covenant between the two of them, for the two nations. And I think that the United States has benefited from and been blessed because of that covenant. Fascinating and significant story. We hope that you've enjoyed our docudrama on the life of Pocahontas. If you'd like to watch this series again, because sometimes you miss a lot of those details the first time, it's much better the second and third time, I can tell you that. You can order a DVD for a gift of only $10. If you'd like to do that, just call the number you see on your screen. It's 1-800-700-7000. Or you can go to 700clubinteractive.com and click the Pocahontas tab at the top of the page. And Gordon, I think, you know, this is such a significant thing to see at this time of the year as we contemplate with Thanksgiving who we are as a nation. Sometimes I think we've forgotten the, the significance of what was invested in this nation, the sacrifice that was made. This is just one story, but one significant story that made all the uh, difference. While, while I was doing this this year, um, the election was unfolding, and you know we need to recognize our roots. If, if we're going to heal, mm -hmm. we need to realize what were the steps that God took to make us heal, uh, and and what led to that piece yeah. of Pocahontas. And if we're looking for that same peace, we need to have the same relationship with Him and a covenant with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and is it just aspirational that we're one nation under yeah. God, indivisible? Uh, we see so much division, we see so much strife, mm -hmm. uh, and how can we come together? Uh, and Absolutely. what a great example of how God worked things out so that people could one come person, together. power yeah. of one to make a difference. Yeah. So Amazing. we can, we and can. I want people to be inspired mm -hmm. by the story, not just for Thanksgiving, to give thanks for what God has done, but for, for the future of America. Do we still have hope in that? Uh, have we given up our, on our own aspirations? So. Uh, look at this story. It's a wonderful one. And if you get a chance, uh, I do recommend Alexander Whitaker's tract. It's called Good News from Virginia, and it's available on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Well, still to come, tis the season to be thankful. I got a nice big family God has blessed me with. Um, of course, I'm just thankful to just be alive and be in this atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Hear what others are thankful for. Plus, Terry and I will share our holiday favorite memories and food next when we come back. So stay with us. Well, Thanksgiving is a time to stop, relax, and reflect on life. We sent out our producers to ask people exactly what they're thankful for. Take a look. I'm thankful for the Thanksgiving feast that I will be eating very soon, along with the family that I'm going to be eating with good friends and the ability to be able to get a college education. Starting new Thanksgiving traditions with my new roommates at, like in our new home. I'm thankful for Jesus. My family, I got a nice big family God has blessed me with. Um, of course I'm just thankful to just be alive and be in this atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all the friends that I have that they're so like caring and that they're always willing to like um, seek after God with me and just like be there for me and also just have a good time with. And what's your favorite part about Thanksgiving? Um, being able to eat a lot of really good food. The noise, like when all the family gets together and they're laughing and joking around and talking. Oh, the food. My mom's cooking. <laughs> so when I get back, I ex expect a lot of food. <laughs> I love the family aspect. When the um, families get together and I love the sweets and stuff too. Uh, everyone being able to come together and cook. I really love cooking and I like doing it with people. I love going to a cabin in Gatlinburg with my family, my girlfriend and everyone and we stay there for the whole weekend and chill and eat a lot and it's really fun. Just just eating until I can't eat anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, always, that's always fun. Oh, I love mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes is probably the best thing on the dinner plate when I get home. Uh, yeah, that's probably like the best part.
All right, Terry, what's, what are you thankful for this year? Well, I agree with that last comment. I love that family environment where everybody's just together. We kind of have a tradition, not just for Thanksgiving, but when we gather as family, we sing a blessing that my grandparents sang and has kind of been passed down over mm. the generations. And we always make rutabaga in honor of Grandma, <laughs> who had it on the Thanksgiving table every year. That's unique. I've never, uh, you sing a we blessing. We sing a blessing. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually an old Norwegian blessing. But, really? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a sample? Sure. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. Amen. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Get a little harmony at the end from everybody, you know. <laughs> what are yours? Um, well, me holiday memories, you know, certainly everybody gathered around. Uh, yes. And we have this huge clan now. <laughs> yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> Multi-generational with great-grandchildren and yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're all gathering and it's going yeah. to be You need a quite small a resort for your, <laughs> for your family <laughs> gatherings. <laughs> They've sort of outgrown every place. Yeah, and, no house can hold you. And it's okay, you know, we, we scatter and yes. then gather. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and everybody takes their part, but it, yeah. it'll be nice. What's your favorite food? Um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm a big turkey and gravy guy. Me too. Yeah, that's, too. Um, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, so. I, I agree. It's all those, what do okay. they call it, that tryptophan or whatever it is that's supposed to. Yeah, turkey coma. That's what I call it. <laughs> you eat enough of it and you're, you're headed Done to the couch. Days. And, you know, who cares who's winning the football game? It's. What it's football lights game? out. <laughs> That's going to be Dallas against Washington. That's yeah. what football game. <laughs> and here's a scripture for you. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you.